Hello everyone, and thank you again for checking out my videos as always. This one is going to be directed at Noah's Ark, and specifically just one one of the many problems with it. Now, like I said, it's only going to be on one thing. I'm not going to be addressing how every species of the animal on the Earth didn't live within walking distance of Noah's Hut, or the fact that animals with special diets that only eat one thing would have died, or that the animals would eat in each other, or obligate human um, pathogens and parasites such as syphilis and chlamydia, so Noah would have had to have herpes and gonorrhea, among other things. Or, you know, I'll ignore the fact that the geological record completely contradicts the idea of a global flood. I'm not going to mention that all the saltwater fish would have died from the rapid influx of saltwater changing salinity, as well as trace nutrients and pH. But instead, I'll just suspend my knowledge of the universe for a couple minutes and talk to you solely about the cheetah. Now, the peer-reviewed paper upon which this video is based is entitled Genetic Basis for Species Vulnerability in the Cheetah. Um, I'm including a link into it into the comments in this video, so you can all go there and check it out if you wish after the video. It's actually a pretty good read. Now, before I begin in depth upon this issue, um, I'd like to start by giving you some basic biology. Um, most of you already know this, but there's something called MHC proteins, which were found on the surface of um, many cells within our bodies. Now, those proteins are used to distinguish self from non-self, and they're the basis, essentially, of any kind of organ rejection, um, tissue rejection, anything like that. Anytime that you have a, a heart transplant and you hear about the person talking about whether the body rejected the organ or not, this is why, for the most part. It, it's based upon the MHC proteins. And there are different versions of each MHC protein. Um, so out of all the ones that we have in our body, there are a, a large number of combinations that we can make so that you can distinguish me and my best friend, you know, even, even me and people who are very, very distantly related, um, we, or even who are closely related, we can't accept organ transplants from one another simply because despite our close relation, there is just too much variation in our MHC proteins, and that leads to any kind of um, organ or skin graft rejection. Something called genetic variability provides a good measure of how fit an organism is. Um, you get genetic variability from having a large population with a large different numbers of versions of the same gene. Um, having two widely different versions basically allows you to be very adaptable to things and be resistant to disease. Now, in organisms with low genetic diversity, such as the cheetah, they've got up to a 70% mortality rate um, due to susceptibility of disease, and it can affect a wide number of things, and also such as, you know, in the cheetah, their ejaculate has 10 times less spermatozoa than that of house cats and things like that. So it essentially cripples an organism, making it very difficult for them to move on. Now, one specific area in which the cheetah has that very low genetic variability is in its MHC proteins. And if you recall correctly, those are the proteins on the surface of cells which determine largely whether or not a skin graft, organ transplant, or whatnot is rejected or accepted. So, to assess this lack of genetic variability, this particular study took 12 skin grafts, 14 total, but 12 of which being from completely unrelated animals, and did them upon each other, um, transplanting skin from one cheetah to another. Now, 12 of them were completely unrelated, and absolutely zero of the 14 were rejected um, during the rapid rejection stage, which basically means that the identity of the donor and the recipient's cheetah's MHC loci were essentially identical. Um, this is extremely indicative of low genetic variability, and the cheetah is essentially bankrupt. Now, the skin graft acceptance from any unrelated organism essentially shows you just how utterly devoid of genetic variability the cheetah is. Um, as I said earlier, it, it has a hundred times less genetic variability than most other cats, let alone all species in general. Um, this genetic uniformity comes with a severe price and consequence. The result is basically the same as being horrendously inbred. For example, the cheetahs, as I said before, have an astronomical infant mortality rate, but in addition to that, they took, they've took they compared infant mortality rates from purely inbred to non-inbred matings of cheetahs, and there's absolutely no difference whatsoever in the mortality rate, which essentially shows that the cheetah is horrendously inbred, essentially. Um, furthermore, the susceptibility to disease is also completely detrimental and obliterated because it's easy to wipe out an entire population because none of the wild, or because none of them will have the, the gene to resist the infection. Now I know this is a gross oversimplification, but bear with me. Um, for example, in the study, it, it 
take, it took a look at a coronavirus infection that yielded a 90% mortality and morbidity um, rate, which wouldn't have happened had they had um, heterozygous loci or decent genetic variability, essentially. So, once again, this lack of genetic variability comes with a severe price. So now the question arises, what caused this severe lack of genetic variability in the cheetah? It's now known that around 10,000 years ago, the cheetah went through a severe population bottleneck, um, which is essentially when a population goes down to such a very small size that the only thing that you can do is inbreed. Um, the cheetah was essentially wiped out. It was limited, or it was lowered down to very few individuals, although certainly many times more than two. And again, this was 10,000 years ago. So stop and think for a moment. Let's take the cheetah 10,000 years ago and cut him down to about seven individuals. Look at what that does. We have utterly low genetic variability, it's got an astronomical infant mortality rate, and you can do skin grafts from any cheetah anywhere in the world on another. That is the consequence of a bottleneck 10,000 years ago with seven individuals. Now let's take Noah's Ark, in which every species on Earth was brought down to two individuals 4,000 years ago, yet has absolutely none of these problems and has an amazing amount of genetic variability. And what's more, just a side note, is how they often comment on kinds. Well, in order to fit all of the species onto the ark, they often have to consider breaking the species down to a genus and saying that the individual species evolved. So, even if every single species in the world fit onto the ark, you would still not have this kind of genetic variability that we see displayed on every single species on Earth. So now the question comes, how do creationists explain this? Well, the answer is that they simply don't. Because any evidence for evolution or whatnot that's not on a mainstream creationist website, they're unable to respond to because they have no training whatsoever in biology, which is essentially what makes a creationist, because if they were educated whatsoever in biology, they would accept evolution. But nonetheless, short of saying that there is super evolution and Jesus just hates cheetahs and didn't super evolve them, there is no answer. Period. And again, this is just one more nail in the coffin, ignoring one of the other hundreds of problems in Noah's Ark.